Hello everyone. Happy New Year. This is Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Welcome to my channel. If you're here for the first time, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Today I have three high-end Dollar Tree non-seasonal farmhouse decor DIYs. For project number one, I'm using two of these long signs from Dollar Tree, four of the wood arrow signs, and I do have some garland there that I'm also going to be using. So to prep these boards, I was very happy to find that these did not have holes in them like usual. They had the hangers stapled to the back, so it's a little bit easier just to remove those staples and sand it a little bit. I am going to keep the backs of these signs as the back of my project. So next I needed to remove the galvanized uh, metal hearts and any loose paper there. We'll take care of that in just a second by sanding it. And then I didn't like that this was going to be on the front of my sign, so I did take some of the lightweight spackle from Dollar Tree just to smooth out that spot on each sign where the paper was a little ripped, and it actually did a marvelous job. So do that, let it dry, sand it, and it's nice and smooth. Now to attach my two signs and make one larger sign, I'm just going to hot glue. These are pieces of five gallon paint stir sticks, but you could definitely use some of the craft sticks that you can get at Dollar Tree. Just something that's going to go across that seam and hold our two boards together. Now that they are one nice big sign, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I was just ready to give white a little break and use more of a neutral tone for this farmhouse decor. I'm trying really hard not to get paint in the little cracks because I really want to keep that shiplap look. So if you do get some in the cracks, you can take your Dollar Tree paint scraper and just kind of run along the crack until you get out any paint that has gotten down in there. This worked really well. And then the space where the two signs are put together, I took a yardstick and then also took my scraper along there to get a uniform look of shiplap. Now, for the word welcome, you have multiple options. You could use poster sticker letters from Dollar Tree. You could do what I did here and just find uh, wording on Google that you like, print it out, and use the transfer paper to trace it on. And then you could always use these metal words from Dollar Tree as well. The thing I like about using the Google images is you can make them as large or as small as you want to fit your project. Now I'm just tracing out the wording with a Sharpie marker, and then I will eventually fill that in with one of my black Elmer's paint markers. Now moving on to the arrows, which are going to be houses. If you can find the wood houses, which I think are coming back out in stores, I would use four of those. Here I was trying to improvise with other Dollar Tree products and use the arrows. And my idea here was to frame it out with the tumbling tower blocks, but I just didn't like how it was looking. So instead I just filled in the holes from the hanger and sanded it down. And these are going to be my four houses for this project. I am going to give them a coat of Waverly chalk paint in ink on the front and all of the edges. And I will do this on all four of my arrow signs. Once that's dry, I am going to give them a coat of matte finish Mod Podge just to even out the tone and also make it easier when I write my letters with a paint marker. It won't soak in as much into the wood. I still thought these were looking too much like arrows, so I took some of my nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I cut two little pieces for each arrow to frame out the roof. And I think this really did the trick 
to make them look more like houses and not so much like arrows pointing up. So just taking some hot glue, running it along the roof line. I'm holding that piece there just to make sure it's straight and then putting the other piece on. The piece on the left is a little bit longer than the piece on the right, only because it goes all the way to the top of the roof. So do that for all four of your houses. Next, taking a pencil, I'm just tracing out the letters H, M, and E on these three houses. And then I'll go back over them with a white paint marker. If you don't want to freehand your letters, you could always use white sticker letters. You could use stencil and then fill that in with paint or paint marker as well. And for the O, I'm just making a small greenery wreath here. This is actually that paper uh, greenery garland from Hobby Lobby's wedding section, but you could definitely use any sort of wreath greenery that you have on hand. And then our last step is just to glue our four houses to our sign and just get those evenly spaced out. And here's how our first project turned out. You could definitely put something in those blank spaces on the left and the right of the word welcome, but I love how clean and simple this looks. I'm not sure if I'll hang it or set it on a shelf. For the second project, I'm using one of these white plastic bathtubs from the toy department, some Dollar Tree succulents, some floral moss, and this galvanized metal spray paint from Walmart. This is the first thing I'm going to do is spray paint the inside and outside of our tub. And then I'm going to hot glue the random leftover pieces I have of floral foam to make them fit into the tub as much as possible. Next, using more hot glue, I'm just going to fill in some of those gaps now around the edges with some of this reindeer moss. I love working with this. It's very pliable and doesn't shed a lot. Now, once all that is filled in on the edges, I'll take some more hot glue and just apply a thin layer of floral moss to cover up the floral foam. And now comes the fun part of arranging our artificial succulents. This is a new one called Donkey Tail that is just now available this spring. And then some of these other ones I've had on hand for a while. I love decorating with succulents being um, from Arizona for a, lot, a long part of my life. And once those are arranged how you want them, just go ahead and hot glue the feet of the tub. I'm actually gluing these to a wood slice just um, for a little more decoration and to give it more of a solid base. Now with this small wood piece, I made a hole with a craft knife and using this thicker uh, floral wire from Dollar Tree, I put some glue in the hole there and I'm just holding it in place and I let it sit for a while until it was pretty solid. So now instead of just a tub, we're making this look like a little old fashioned shower. My wire was a little bit too long, so I am going to trim it just a bit and then get that glued into place. And here's how our little succulent shower turned out. I think it's so cute, very fresh for spring or any time of the year. I love the natural elements also of the wood slice. And here's our little succulents. 
Our third project is going to use two of these round mirrors, a glass candle holder from Dollar Tree, some chalk paint, some poster board, and some of these wood beads that I purchased in bulk from Amazon. I'll make sure to put the link in the description. You will want to remove the little hanger from each of your mirrors just so your um, mirrors will lie flat. And what I did is I traced with a poster board and cut out. I was going to use that um, on the back of each of my mirrors, but I had a thought that I wanted um, to use some of this lightweight spackle to fill in the gap on one of them so that the wood beads would have something more than just a flat piece of poster board to be glued to. I hope that makes sense. And I did love how this turned out. It did take almost a full container of the spackle. I'd say maybe two thirds of a container, but just applying it in there with a craft stick and then getting it as even as possible. Let it dry. I let it dry overnight and I absolutely loved how it turned out. Now, whatever size bead I used, I needed 38 of them to go all the way around that little space that we filled in with the spackle. And so I put those on some thinner floral wire just so they would all stay together in one group. And then hot gluing and super gluing the end there. We're just going to let that dry. So now we have one ring of these wood beads. Now, once those beads were secure and were not going to come apart, taking my hot glue here, you can see I'm just putting a row of it in the middle of our speckle ring, I guess I'll call it. And then we're going to set our wood bead ring on top of that and let that dry. Now, I really liked this. Like I said, I would next time do instead of poster board on the other one do the spackle as well it does cost a little more but i think it would stick together just a little better so now just running a bead of hot glue on top of the row of beads i'm going to attach the other mirror that has the poster board back on top Now for the height of my little pedestal, I'm using one of these Dollar Tree uh, candle holders that I had on hand. I have found when you want to paint, even with chalk paint on glass, it's best if you do a layer of Mod Podge first. So that's what I'm doing and I'm letting that dry. Once it's dry, it just has a better surface for the chalk paint to adhere to. And so then I'm doing a layer of ink Waverly chalk paint and we'll let that dry as well and then once the paint is dry I do go back and do another layer of the Mod Podge just to seal in that chalk paint. Yes it's two extra steps but I really feel like it um, just gives your project more uh, stability and you don't have to worry about the paint chipping off. So then I did with some fix all and some hot glue attach that to the center of our bottom mirror. And then this is what our pedestal looks like. You could definitely leave it like this if you want. You could have used a black poster board and then just had black and the wood beads, but I want to give this more of a farmhouse distressed look. So using more of my plaster chalk paint and this big chippy brush, I am just distressing everything now that I had painted black or was black. So the mirrors, and the candle holder at the bottom. And getting some of the paint on the beads is just fine, but I do like that the wood color still shows through. Don't worry about getting paint on the mirror. It wipes right off with a little of that awesome spray cleaner from Dollar Tree. So here's how it turned out. Of course, you can distress it more or less depending on your style. And I love the black and white with the natural wood, but look at how gorgeous this looks, just adding a little bit of greenery and a candle to the top. Gorgeous, gorgeous, and it costs, you know, maybe $4 to make. 
I really hope you guys have enjoyed these three high-end Dollar Tree farmhouse decor DIYs. Please let me know in the comments which of these three is your favorite. I always love to hear feedback from you guys. Please give this video a big thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed, I really hope you'll hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye.